Hey guys, it's Sarah, and today I'm going to be doing my June wrap up. I actually think I had a pretty good reading month. A lot of that had to do with doing the um, reading rainbow readathon. That's always a tongue twister every time I try to say it. Um, that allowed me to read three books in one week, which was super great. But anyway, getting into it. The first book I read in the month of June was The Kiss of Deception. I've talked about this book once before on a Top 5 Wednesday. Basically it's about a girl named Leah who's a princess and she's meant to marry a prince from a faraway land who she's never met. On her wedding day she decides, I ain't gonna do that, so she runs away, but little does she know that there's a prince and an assassin hot on her trail chasing after her. So funny thing about this book. There is a twist in it that I didn't even know existed. I guess most people knew that a twist was coming, but I had no idea. It caught me blind. And I actually tweeted Mary Pearson about it, and she tweeted me back, so that's pretty nice. So for the most part, I would say that I liked this book. I think Mary Pearson's writing style is really beautiful. Her prose is nice. Um, the only complaint I have about this book is it's pretty slow in the beginning. Um, it just takes a long time introducing the relationships and the characters and the action doesn't really happen until like the last hundred pages of the book. But it kept me intrigued enough to keep reading and I am excited to read the second one. There is a love triangle in it. Can't escape those in YA anymore. But I actually didn't really mind it. I think it's interesting. I think it's pretty obvious who Leah likes. But I'm kind of interested to see what happens in the second book if the other suitor catches her interest more than he has in the first book. Also, there was a lot of betrayal in the book, which was always good. And then the second book is called Heart of Betrayal, which is perfect because, you know, betrayal themes, yeah. Mm. The second book I read this month was Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I loved this book. I read it in practically one sitting. It's so cute. Basically, it's about this girl named Kath who goes to college for the first time with her twin sister, but last minute her twin sister decides that she doesn't want to be roommates with Kath and that they should go their separate ways and make new friends. The only issue is that Kath is really antisocial and she spends all her time writing fan fiction about this fictional book series called Simon Snow, which is similar to Harry Potter, and her sister's kind of grown out of that, and so it's just basically a book about her figuring out who she is without her sister, and then there's a lot of underlying, like, coming-of-age themes. Um, there's like a lot of family drama and other things in here, and I just loved it. When I first read the description, I honestly didn't think that I, it would interest me. I was like, what, a, a nerdy girl writing fan fiction? Why do I care? I was very wrong. I apologize for those misconceptions that I had. It's really cute, and surprisingly, it's like fairly deep. Um, the characters are really funny. I absolutely love um, Kath, the narrator. Um, I also really like her roommate, Reagan, and then also her love interest. His name's Levi. If I could have a Levi, life would be really good. Basically, Levi has to be one of my like ultimate favorite guy roles. He's just such a real character. Like, I don't get me wrong, I love characters like Will Herndale and Jace Wayland and, you know, any other hunky guy from a YA book. But in some ways, when I'm reading about those characters, I kind of realize that if I knew them in real life, I might not want them and all their baggage. <laughs> But with Levi, he's just like an average guy, even the way Rainbow Rowell writes about him. Like, he's like cute, but he's not overly good looking. And he's just really funny, and he smiles at people, and he's really encouraging and nice to everyone he meets. And to me, ultimately, if I met a guy in real life, I think I'd want a Levi over the other bad boys, even though I do love them. I just think it would be more realistic to meet a Levi. So, hashtag relationship. Goals. Also, a cool thing that um, Rainbow did before each chapter was you got to either read an excerpt of Simon Snow or an excerpt of um, Kath's fan fiction. It was really good. 
The next book I read, which was the first book that I read in the Reading Rainbow Readathon, was We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. I actually had no idea what this book was about going into it, like legitimately. I hadn't read the synopsis, I didn't know anything. Basically, it's about a girl named Cadence who comes from a very wealthy family named the Sinclairs, and they have basically like their own island that they go to every summer. And every summer, since she was born, she goes to this island with her family and they just do what wealthy people do and like play tennis and are just really classy and all that jazz but then obviously they have a bunch of deeper problems that they don't talk about but anyway um, you find out in the beginning that Cadence had an accident when she was 15 and she doesn't remember what happened to her and so she hasn't been back to the island in I think two years and so she goes back to the island and she's determined to find out what happened to her, to her because no one seems to want to tell her and she's very confused why her memory is so spotty about the accident. The writing style is very strange and disjointed because um, Cadence is like telling the story but it's like her thought process and the way she thinks is really weird. Like she'll say a sentence but then she'll say it like three times again and she uses like really dramatic metaphors for her pain like there's this scene in the beginning this was kind of the first scene that i i noticed that that was the writing style where this one character is doing something that's really hurting her like emotionally and so basically she says then he picked up a gun and he shot me in the heart and my heart fell out in the flowers in the garden and i legitimately thought for a second that he had actually shot her and i was like whoa and so then i like read it again and i realized that it was just like a metaphor for her pain and so it was a little weird to get used to at first but then the more i like read the more i was like this is Pretty. I like it. So yeah, so I really liked it. I read on Goodreads that a lot of people don't like it. They think it's weird, but I just felt like it was just really interesting the way that she thought. It was really different. And I've actually read a lot of E. Lockhart's other books. I read the Ruby Oliver series, which is all like comedy. And so it was just really cool to see how diverse E. Lockhart can be with her writing. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. And if any of you saw my wrap up video for the readathon, I was like weeping when I finished this book. And I love any book that makes me cry. The next book I read in the readathon was Ruby Red. Yeah, I didn't really like this one. Basically, this one's about a girl named Gwyneth who comes from this family of like time travelers and only like one person is born with a gene every generation or whatever and she thinks it's her cousin, but then she finds out early on in the book that it's actually her. So yeah, it's about time travel, which was cool, because I haven't really read that many YA books that involve time travel, but it was very, very slow. Literally, I was on page like 250 being like, when is something gonna happen? The love interest isn't even introduced until like, more than halfway through the book. It's just really confusing. And so this is the first book of a trilogy, so I guess, Maybe the other books are more fast paced, but I just, I didn't get this one. I didn't get it. I actually did record <laughs> a book review for this. It's more like a book ramble. <laughs> I haven't even tried to edit it yet because it's basically like over 30 minutes of footage of me just rambling about this book. So I don't really know if I'm going to upload that or not. If you still like to see it, you can let me know in the comments but it legitimately is like just me rambling about the book. <laughs> the next book that I read was Rebel Bell by, who wrote this? Rachel Hawkins. Um, this book was okay. I gave it a three out of five stars on Goodreads. Basically it's about a girl named Harper who is kind of like this type A girl who is like student body president, head cheerleader, Etc. Etc. Like she's just the best in her class at everything that she does, and in the very beginning of the book, she gets these special powers from the school janitor, and she becomes a paladin, which is someone who is in charge of like protecting someone. And basically, the person that she's meant to protect is actually her sworn enemy, who is this guy on the newspaper who she has always been rivals with since she was a kid. So what I have to say about this book is that I liked the main character. I thought the way she narrated was funny. I actually laughed out loud. But I would say plot-wise, there's a lot of holes and it's lacking and even the explanation of paladins and 
the powers that she has now are not explained super well. So I m think I'm going to read the next book in the series, but I can't say that I loved this book. So the next book I read, which I loved, was Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This book, I actually went through it pretty quickly. Um, I didn't know anything about it when I picked it up. I just knew that I had some fantasy elements and that some people said it was like Narnia meets I don't even remember what the other thing was. And it takes place in Prague, which is really cool. But let's just give it up to Lainey Taylor for being a really good author. Her writing is phenomenal. I just think this book is very imaginative and creative and it's really different from lots of other things that I have read. I actually gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. The only thing I will say about it is that you get backstory kind of late in the book if that makes sense. So for like the first three quarters of the book you're just kind of learning about this new world and all the different fantasy but you don't really know how things work and then randomly in like the last 120 pages or something it's just kind of all thrown at you at once with all these flashbacks and I just kind of wasn't into that. It kind of like slowed me down because I wanted to be in the present and kind of like with the current characters. I'm not going to describe the plot though because I think this book is kind of fun to just go in not knowing anything about because that's actually what I do with a lot of books. I try not to know too much about them and then I like to be surprised as I'm reading. But yeah, this was a really great book. I definitely recommend it to people. I'm really excited to read the next one in the series. And the last book that I read in June is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. I actually technically have not finished this. I'm on page 385, so I have like 100 pages left. But it's due back to the library tomorrow, so it's kind of a race against the clock, and I'm pretty sure I'll finish it. Um, I'm planning on like hopefully reading at least 50 pages today and then 50 pages tomorrow and then I'll run it back to the library. But I've been really liking it. Um, I think the characters are hilarious. I've laughed out loud multiple times. I think I'll definitely give this book a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. Um, just because sometimes it can feel a little slow so I, it just doesn't feel like it would be a 5 to me. But I like it and I'm excited to keep going in the series, if you know what I mean. <laughs> that was my wrap up. Basically I read 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 for Kiss of Deception. I read 7 books in June. That's really good. It's been a long time since I read that many books in a month. So I'm pretty amped about that. This is my TBR pile for July. Um, I don't know if you can see my system because they're all from the library. But um, I marked them by when they have to go back to the library. These four books, or three books, need to go back by July 11th. And then these ones need to go back by the 18th. So I have to read pretty much a lot of books in the first half of July. But I'm really excited to read Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. That's probably one of my tops. And then Eleanor and Park. And then I've got Ready Player One. But yeah, so this is my TBR pile for next month. I don't think I'm going to make a whole video about it. Hope you enjoyed this video and hearing about all the books that I read this month. Thanks for watching.